In this video, I'm going to rewrite the time-independent Schrodinger equation in terms of the Hamiltonian operator. This video is part of a playlist on quantum mechanics. You can find the link to this playlist in the description below. First of all, let's write down the Hamiltonian operator as we saw in the previous video. So the Hamiltonian operator, I'll write uh, as denoted by H with a little hat on top, uh, that is equivalent to uh, minus h bar squared over 2m times a second partial derivative with respect to x plus the potential which needs to be specified, but we know it's just a function of x. It doesn't depend on any other variables, just x. So this is the kinetic energy part and this is the potential energy part. Now, I'm going to write down the time-independent Schrodinger equation. And then we're going to have a look at some of the similarities between these terms over here and the terms inside the time independent Schrodinger equation. Where did we see the time independent Schrodinger equation first? In this playlist, when we were solving the Schrodinger equation uh, using the method of separation of variables, we actually got the time independent Schrodinger equation. And inside that equation was just lowercase psi. And lowercase psi, uh, as opposed to capital psi, so you have capital psi, which depends on x and t. And then you have lowercase psi, which just depends on x. And there's also a, a factor related to the time, but we're not going to discuss this uh, time-related factor in, in this video. We're just interested in this psi of x. And the time-independent Schrodinger equation is concerned with this guy over here. So I'm going to write this down. Uh, make sure you watch that video on separation of variables where we uh, solve the Schrodinger equation. And then this, this next step is going to make a lot more sense. So, we have a term that's related to the kinetic energy. It's got a minus h bar squared over 2m. Then we've got a second derivative of psi with respect to x. And here's the thing I want, to, want you to notice. Uh, over here I'm writing a total derivative, but up here I have a partial derivative. In general, we want to keep this as a partial derivative because the thing that we're acting on, the thing that this operator is acting on, that could depend on x and t and loads of other things, right? It can depend on other variables. So we want to focus just on x. We want to keep everything constant, and we just want to differentiate with respect to x. But in this situation over here, little psi, lowercase psi, only depends on x. So we don't have to use a partial derivative. We can use a total derivative. And in fact, we use the total derivative uh, afterwards uh, when we use separation of variables. So this is actually an ODE. It's an ordinary differential equation. And we uh, talked about solving this ordinary differential equation. And we solved another ordinary differential equation, which was related to this phi of t term over here. And that gave us an exponential. So this is the kinetic energy term. Now we also need a potential term. That's going to be v psi. And this is all equal to e times psi. And e is the allowed energy. So if you look at the left-hand side, it looks like we are applying something to psi, and that's giving us a number times psi. Now, if you've learned linear algebra before, you might have, have uh, come across the idea of a matrix acting on a vector, and that giving just the vector with a constant at the front. That's an eigenvector problem, right? So you can think of this guy as an eigenvalue. And in fact, a lot of, uh, of these concepts are linked to linear algebra. We actually use a lot of linear algebra concepts in quantum mechanics. So we're applying some kind of operator to psi, and that's giving us psi back, but psi is being scaled by this eigenvalue. And this eigenvalue is actually uh, the energy, right? That's an allowed energy value. So let's group together some things. All of this stuff over here is the same as this guy over here. The only difference is that there's a partial derivative over here and a total derivative over here. And, and we discussed that difference earlier. So what about this guy over here? We have a potential as a function of x, and here we have a potential. So what we can actually do is we can move this psi out, and we can see that there is this combination, which is the Hamiltonian operator, acting on psi. So I'm going to write this down in a more condensed notation. We can write this as the Hamiltonian, with a little hat, operator, acting on psi is the same as multiplying psi by this eigenvalue e. And we're going to talk a, a, a lot more uh, in detail, and we're going to uh, actually formally define all of these concepts in later videos in this playlist. 
But this is the takeaway message. This is actually the time-independent Schrodinger equation written in terms of the Hamiltonian operator. So what we have is an operator acting on psi, and that's giving us back psi with an eigenvalue constant out the front. So if all these terms eigenvector and eigenvalue don't really make sense, they will if you keep watching some of the later videos in this playlist. So what, what has this video actually shown? We have started with the Hamiltonian operator. Right? We, we worked out the Hamiltonian operator in the previous videos. Then we took a look at the time-independent Schrodinger equation, and we saw that there's actually a little bit that is familiar over here, and there's another bit that's actually familiar over here. And this bit is linked to the kinetic energy, and this bit is linked to the uh, potential energy. So we actually have a total energy operator acting on psi. Right? That's what this left-hand side is. And then we actually condensed it down by rewriting this as the Hamiltonian operator. And the Hamiltonian operator is one of the most important operators in quantum mechanics. You can actually rewrite the Schrodinger equation in terms of the Hamilton, uh, Hamiltonian operator. This over here is the time-independent Schrodinger equation, where we're just trying to find these psi values. But the Hamiltonian operator can actually give you the time evolution of the system as well in the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. And we'll go into a lot more detail in later videos of this playlist. And make sure you watch all of those videos. You can find all the videos in this quantum mechanics playlist if you click over here.